tore down under stage four. I apologize in advance for the dreadful footage. But anyway, the quality is not too bad, just the sizing is. Okay, 6.4 kilometers go. Corkscrew, if you didn't know, is about 2.7 kilometer climb, 10% average. The brake has been caught, uh, well, about to be caught. Team Sky on the front with Kenny Alessand. Uh, they also have Dylan Van Baal and Wout Pools. Uh, and yeah, so basically finished finish corkscrew, fast descent down Montague, and then right-hander into the final finish straight. Anyway, Wout Pools sort of goes, not on the attack big time, he just ups the pace a little bit, causes a selection. Uh, Dylan Van Baal sort of lets the wheel go. And you've got probably the four strongest climbers here, Woods, uh, Port, Bennett, uh, and Pools. So you can see Dylan Van Baal sort of just like, I think he sort of wanted to win this stage because he seemed to ride not in a team aspect. Anyway, uh, Woods goes on the front now, starts to drill it more. Uh, they did about they climbed this pay, this uh, climb at about seven watts per kilo more or less, um, depending on the power meters. It's, Bennett said seven point three, Wood said six point nine, but you know, so around seven watts per kilo for um, seven minutes, which is pretty solid. Uh, four days into a stage, uh, but I think the stage didn't seem it was crazy crazy hard, um, from what I could tell based on the power. But I think the brake was uh, was pretty strong. Um, so anyway, six point three kilometers to go, and uh, yeah, it's it's looking pretty pretty calm to be honest. Um, this is generally what happens on corkscrew. You'll get the climbers really need to try and make a gap, a huge gap, because the descent is super fast at the top and quite technical. But then it goes um, quite open roads, really flat, and um, obviously climbers aren't gonna have the same raw power as um, the people behind. Um, so anyway, Bennett is just uh, he really n realizes that he's not gonna get that much time on Wollonga. You need to really try and drop Richie Port and everyone else. Um, I guess Patrick Bevan at the moment because he's got a big advantage um, at the moment. Uh, he really needs to drop him. That poor bloke dropped his phone. Didn't realise. Poor lad. Um, but anyway, like, the crowds are pretty... They're all right. Like, it's not that good, I thought. I thought it would be a bit... Um, a bit more people out. There were quite a lot at the top, but I was I was expecting a bit more, considering how close Corkscrew is to Adelaide. It's a bit disappointing, in my opinion. Uh, but anyway, again, the climb just keeps going on and on and on. Nothing... I mean, it's not that technical, to be honest, the climb. Like, it's pretty straight. I mean, it's like 10% more or less. It's not, it's not crazy steep. Everyone sort of says it's steep. I mean, it's like... I mean, these guys ride at like 20, 22 k's an hour. So, I mean, it's like, it's a pretty fast climb. You are getting a draft. Anyway, round the corner, we're going to watch some... I don't think any of these guys are great descenders. Wout Pools is probably the best, maybe. But, like, Bennett, Woods, Port, none of them seem to impress me on this descent. They made a lot of errors. And I think that helped massively in the fact that the people behind managed to catch back on. Uh, there was sort of, like, a couple guys from UAE, um, including Pogasar, who I, I am a big fan of, um, then there was Dries Devonines uh, from Quickstep, Patrick Bevan. Um, you had Michael Storer, I believe, was the... Oh, no, sorry. Uh, Lucas Hamilton was uh, the somewhere bribe in between the gap. Dylan Van Baal is there. Uh, we had Asana Man, uh, which is Luis Leon Sanchez. Movistar, which is Ruben Fernandez, I believe. Um, and Pozzo Viva was there as well. So, anyway, on this descent, this first corner, look how badly Richie Port takes. It goes way too slow. Um, Woods cuts inside, then leads them down. And Woods, I don't think, is a great descender either. I don't think any of these guys are top top class um and it really shows there's a when one year i Cadell went down here and he was, oh my god he was flying they redid redone my on to cute which is quite nice i really like this descent i have actually ridden it a couple of times um it's really fast quite flowy there's a, maybe only one or two corners where you really need to break the rest of them you can sort of just back off the pedals and um go through so yeah i have five kilometers to go i mean this is like 65 70 k's an hour so it's going to be literally like less than five minutes probably before they um get to the finish line which is why i took it i mean it seems like a long way out um but anyway at the moment you thought like four guys working up front they probably get away uh but they didn't really and patrick bevan i guess he realized like this is his tour down under like he just has to bury himself on this descent um he probably knows it quite well uh i think richie port must know his descent as well like i mean a lot of the guys have come back to tour down under over the years um there are a couple of splits from behind but look here like they seem to be doing like a decent job of doing a bit of um like just rolling turns or whatever but then they just keep on making like stupid errors where like, the person on the front will go too hard and then when he gets back on, will struggle to get back on or they don't do long enough turns or do too short turns. It just wasn't really a proper thing. And again, around this corner, it just wasn't really great. Richie Ports get gapped off again. I, I just don't understand that. Like, come on, you just need to not make errors on the descent like this, especially in the last four kilometers. But watch Woods here. Again, goes too fast in the corner, jinx out and causes Richie Port to have to adjust his line. Like that thing, it shouldn't be happening. You shouldn't be too wide round in that corner. You should be like, full gas, ruin it, like, just, like, you know, I don't know, just, like, you just really need to go hard, like, here, it looks like, I mean, you think, oh, they're going hard, but then, in reality, like, the guys from behind have a way less coordinated ch chase, but look at Pools here, he's just, like, 
suddenly he's like, oh no, they're going too fast. Like drops the wheel and then has to do a big surge. Then Woods has to do a big surge. Like that just ruins the cohesion of the group. Then Richie Port's then going to drop back in. And as soon as you see one person's not working, then everyone else is going to slightly back off. And then like, it's just not going to happen. So I think in reality, they could have, they could have won the stage, the four of them, if they'd properly worked together and maybe attacked earlier. Um, but instead, like here again, Woods is just sitting on. Like, but I don't think he is sitting on. I think it's just he can't really close the gap because he's gassed out. And then again, around this corner, like none of them going that fast around the corner. Like you can pedal around that corner for sure. Um, yeah, it, it just wasn't. This is probably how not to descend in a group. Um, and you see what pools here. Like they don't look like they're going that fast. I mean, obviously they're going like full gas, but it, it just didn't really seem like. I think they lost a lot of time on the corners. If you look at the group, but behind them, um, they're really like. Yeah, really motoring down. Like, look at the speed difference. I mean, they closed a huge gap. It was probably like a 10, 15 second gap over the top of that climb. We have Ruben Guerrero at the back. Um, Pogosar's there. Uh, who else do we have? We have got Dylan Van Baal. Uh, we've got Lucas Hamilton on the right-hand side. You've also got his brother, Chris Hamilton. Um, I can't remember. I think Lucas Hamilton rides with Michelin Scott. Anyway, he does a good job pulling this break back. He really does. Daryl Impey is probably the strongest sprinter um, and was like, well, we'll pull it back. Um, there are a couple other decent sprinters like Bevan, obviously, Luis Leon Sanchez, a couple others, but no one like really on Impey's class because Impey can win like a bunch kick, like a proper bunch kick um, so on like a weaker field. So like, you know, it is his to win in reality. Um, Jay McCarthy, I don't know what's happened to him. I thought he'd be up here, but he just didn't make it over. Um, and then here you can see that, yeah, Lucas Hamilton's just on the front um, and just, yeah, driving it, really, really trying to make a difference. Um, Drew Stevenines is in that sort of weird orange quick step helmet. Um, he makes it over. He's got a decent kick, but again, nothing crazy. Richie Port, I think, decides that to attack and then realizes the pace is too high and just sort of sits up. Uh, Ruben Fernandez, I believe, is at the back, just cruising. Um, and yeah, like it's a pretty select group to be honest. Like there aren't, I mean, everyone here is is, is world class, but it's definitely a bigger group than usual. And I think that's just because it wasn't raced as aggressively. Like the whole day so more of them were fresh and also I don't think Team Sky pace was, was that crazy and um, when pools attack like I think a lot of people realise if they just rode tempo over the climb then you can actually get back instead of really trying to exert themselves on the climb so you can see here only one kilometre go um, they go down this descent again super fast still and then they take a right hand corner and reality you need to be about top three top four in this position you can see people trying to move up on the right hand side here like Drew Stevenines but yeah, the, the, you've really got to be very front, or, uh, very near the front. And you'll also watch that there's an error about seven wheels back. Someone drops a wheel and everyone else basically is then off because it takes the corner too slow um, and then cheerio. So if you watch this corner about seven wheels back, I believe it actually might be Mike Woods who messes. Oh, no, it's someone else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look here, there's suddenly a gap. When they go to the helicopter shot, you'll be able to see there's suddenly this huge gap. Five people get tailed off the back. Luis Alain Sanchez launches early. Good idea, I think, for him. He doesn't have a mega fast sprint but he can sort of hold it off from the front. Then Bevan comes around and like, because it's such a fast sprint, 70K an hour, I'd say, because it's slight downhill. Uh, then Daryl MP has a great draft, just goes on the other side of the road. I mean, I think he probably should have gone close to Bevan to get more of a draft, but takes it easy. Ruben Guerrero, I believe, gets third and, no, gets fourth and Lewis Lane Sanchez gets third, um, decided by bike throw. So it's a pretty solid ride by Daryl MP. Uh, he must be pretty happy with that. Um, like, obviously he won Tour Down last year. He's, I wouldn't say he's the favorite, I still, Bevan's still the favorite. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely helped him a lot. If he can drop Bevan on uh, Wollonga, maybe even try and pick up a couple bonus seconds tomorrow, um, it, maybe they'll, Mishton and Scott will work to try and get the break back and, and take um, some bonus seconds on the intermediate sprint. I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, like, it was a pretty good, pretty solid stage. Uh, Dylan Van Marlo was up there as well for Team Sky. Um, and yeah, so anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy this video. Uh, and I'll see you in the next one.